So, I uh, will get the usual passes back, but uh, first, uh, uh, so if I can have everyone's attention. So, um, the stuff we've done this week, uh, domain has, I think, been pretty abstract. I mean, in the sense that there weren't any word problems, for example, on any of the uh, the class work that we did on the domain. So let's go from that to something very concrete. The average rate of change of a function on an interval. So we've discussed linear functions. They're the only functions we've really gone in depth on. And linear functions are very special because they have constant rates of change. The y equals mx plus b, this m is a constant here. Let's try that spelling again. <laughs> this m is a constant rate of change. Incidentally, uh, or not incidentally, but uh, as a slight side note, test, but great, very happy with it. The most missed problem was the one where you were given a linear profit function and you were asked, well, how much profit is being made per widget? And profit per widget is a rate of change. It's something per something. So all I was looking for in that problem was for you to look at the equation and identify the rate of change. You didn't have to set it equal to zero or anything like that. But uh, getting back to this, um, linear functions are special this way. Like quadratic functions do not have constant rates of change. If I and I say, even as I say that, I know we have not in this class defined quadratic functions, but if you have something like the following, the height of a bottle rocket, T, seconds after launch is h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 100 feet. I mean, we don't know the details about quadratics yet, but we can certainly see that this isn't linear. It is not of the form mt plus b. And the rate that a rocket's height changes is the rocket's speed. And this rocket is going to go really fast at first, but as it gets higher, gravity will slow it down, so it will get slower. Its rate of change is not constant. 
So if we want to talk about the change of this function, we kind of have two options available to us. And one of those options isn't a real option because it's a learn calculus, which would be a pretty extreme length to go to. The second option, is that we can find average rates of change on intervals. from A to B. And keeping with this example, I mean, you can talk about an object's average speed, right? I mean, I drove from one city to another, and sometimes I go through towns and have to slow down, and other times I'm on the highway and speed up. But on average, I drove about 60 miles per hour. You can make statements like that. And that's a statement about an average rate of change. What the average rate of change is, I mean, where I'm going to put an equation on the board, but where this equation comes from for the curious is if we have a function defined on some interval, then we look at this and think about crafting from here to here. So we uh, don't go directly from here to here. We take a kind of circuitous, circuitous route. But ultimately, we're going from the first point to the last point. And the average rate of change formed of the, is the slope of that line connecting the first point and the last point. So if this looks really familiar to you, it's because this is the rise over the run form of the. This point here is A comma F of A. This point here is B comma F of B. The average rate of change formula is the rise over the run formula. Let's do an example with this formula. And since we have a function already written on the whiteboard, we might as well do an example with, with this function. Let's silo that off. And that's, I should be better about writing down exactly what exercise I'm actually doing. So the example we'll look at is to find the average rate of change of this function h of t on the interval from zero to three. 
and I haven't talked about this yet, but I'm going to make an additional requirement. I'm going to say that we want to include units. Um, this is something that we're sometimes sloppy about, but if you've got a word problem, the numbers in the word problem are basically always going to have units attached to them, right? Here, we've got seconds and we've got feet. So if I say that the average rate of change in the height is 12, that doesn't mean anything. 12 what? 12 feet per minute, feet per second, meters per minute, meters per second. So we do want to include units when we find average rates of change. And I'll talk more about units as we do the example. Let me Silo the formula off. And let's apply this. We're calling our function h instead of f, but that's not going to change anything essential. We're looking at the interval from zero to three. So the first value is A, the second value is B. And we'll plug and play or plug and chug. I think that's an East Coast, West Coast divide, which of those you learn. We'll plug and play with this function. <laughs> H of three minus H of zero over three minus zero. And I mean, to, to compute this, we're going to need H of three and we're going to need h of zero, and one of those I can do in my head, but only one of those. So let's get this calculator loading up. And let's do the one I can do in my head, which is h of zero. Negative 4.9 times zero squared, Question. That's not the same number as the equation, the example we were using. Oh, you're right. I I instinctively went to meters. I'm so used to that. It's negative 4.9 for meters, negative 16 for feet. Thank you for pointing that out to me. <laughs> Plus 100, yeah, that's right. So, plus 100, is this formula right? This formula isn't right. Sorry to do that, but go to your notes and add a T to that 100. So h of zero is just to zero. h of three, so negative 16 times three squared 
plus 100 times 3. One of those things we could probably do in our head if we really set our mind to it, but I don't want to set really set my mind to it. I want to get an answer easily and quickly. So negative 16 times 3 squared plus 100 times 3. And you know, you could do some of this in your head, like a hundred times three is clearly, I shouldn't say clearly, but it is 300. So you could just type plus 300. But we end up <laughs> with 156. not mean to suddenly change the color. Oh, sorry that this board is getting a little crowded. Let's now silo those off. And let's go up here and let's finish the problem. H of three minus H of zero over three minus zero. I mean, I could also have gone to the calculator to do that, but 156 divided by three is 52. Um, goes into 15 five times, then goes into six twice. And let's talk about units. So the key point here is that you've got this time and time has a unit, and you've got this height, and height has a unit. So here, this 156, this zero, this three, and this zero, they really all have units attached to them. I mean, we don't bother writing those units down in the equation. But zero and three are times. There are values of T, and time is measured in seconds. So this three is three seconds, and this zero is three seconds. And the 156 and the zero, those are heights. The height at three is 156. The height at zero is zero. And height is measured in feet. So to find the, this is gonna cover stuff. Let's get rid of it. The units come directly from this fraction. The units of the top is feet. The units in the bottom are seconds. So the units of this rate of change, this average rate of change are feet per second. That's the average rate of change 
formula. We're not done with this, but does anybody have any questions so far? Then the average rate of change formula, um, this example we just did is very different from the examples you're going to do in the classwork. And that's because the average rate of change formula is most commonly used when you don't have a formula for the function. And what I mean when I say that is, I mean, look at this, look at this fraction, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. You need four things here. You need to know f of b, you need to know f of a, you need to know b, you need to know a. So what if Instead of telling you what the height function was, what if I gave you the following pieces of information? I say, okay, we have this height function after zero seconds. The height is zero feet. After three seconds, the height is 156 feet. This is all of the information we need to use the average rate of change form of the, if I give you the following exercise, find the average rate of change of this function, h of t, on the interval from zero to three. Well, we know that h of zero equals zero. We know that h of three is 156. So h of three minus h of zero divided by three minus zero is, I mean, is just to this. And this is now work we've already done. So to find the average rate of change, we didn't need to know that the height was a quadratic. We didn't need to know that that negative 32 was there. We didn't need to know that the 100 was there. All we needed to find the average rate of change was a few data points. Let's give a completely different example to sort of drive home what I mean by this. At the very start of a week, that is to say zero days, into the week, midnight of the first day, ten people 
have heard a rumor at the end of the week. So the very end, seven days in, 97 people have heard it. On average, how quickly and this pen is just ceasing to function on average. How quickly did the rumor spread? So we're looking for an average rate of change here on a time interval. We are, we are starting at zero and we're ending at seven. And we want to know how quickly something changed on average over that interval. So we're looking for the average rate of change formula. And we're not given an equation for the rumor. Um, thankfully, because a realistic equation would be quite complicated. We're just given data points. We're told what happens at the start of this interval. We're told what happens at the end of this interval. <clears throat> but those data points are all that we need to use the average rate of change formed of a. So, We've got a function, it's not named, but maybe we'll call it R. That goes from the day to the number of people. And this is some place where it can be, um, where, where students can struggle, where people can struggle because in general, problems like this aren't going to use function terminology. What you don't see here is the word input and the word output. So we need to kind of, we need to recognize ourselves that the input is time and the output is the number of people. And if you're struggling with this, you can think back to earlier days. The input is the independent variable. The output is the dependent variable. So would we be more likely to say that the spread of the rumor depends how long it's been spreading? Or would we be more likely to say that the day of the week depends on how many people have heard the rumor? Well, that last one is, uh, is giving that rumor a lot of power if the number of people who have heard it controls the day of the week, it would make more sense to say that the day is independent and the number of people who have heard the rumor 
depends how far into the week it is. And once we've sort of recognized this, we can say, well, zero days into the week, 10 people had heard the rumor. Seven days into the week, 97 people <laughs> have heard the rumor, if I'm remembering those numbers correctly, which I am. And once we've organized our data like that, where gold, the average rate of change on the interval from zero to seven, now R of seven minus R of zero over seven minus zero. R of seven is 97. R of zero is 10. So I try to be flexible. I mean, I know Math stresses people out. You don't want to make stuff more stressful if you don't have to. So, I mean, students ask, you know, can I use fractions? Can I use decimals? It's 87. You are correct. It is your day for pointing out my errors, <laughs> and I always appreciate it. So um, I try to be flexible. You use fractions, you use decimals, whatever. I would ordinarily get a decimal just because I think 87 over seven is hard for most of us to, like it's between 10 and 20 probably, but more than that, it's hard to look at that and get, um, get much intuition about it. 87 divided by 7 is about 12.4. 12 12.4 what? So this 97 and that 10 are people. 10 people heard the rumor, 97 people heard the rumor. And this seven and this zero are the day. Zero days in, seven days in. So we're measuring the spread of this rumor in the people per day. Yeah. Does anybody have questions about this? Then, let me, is this recording? It was recording. 